All right, so I've got kind of a big thing to tell you, which is that, well, I'm pregnant. So basically I found out a couple weeks ago when I went to the doctor for a normal like gyno exam. I did a urine sample and it came back positive for pregnancy. <laughs> Yay, we're gonna have a little baby. <laughs> I hope she's a girl. So I rushed back to the boat and I was really excited because Jordan was actually in the middle of filming a scene for an episode. We can get up to the minute weather routing that will utilize all of the latest information and forecasting data. And we can just sort of integrate this whole procedure into our offshore sailing routine. What? Are you pregnant? Yeah. You're kidding. No. You're kidding. No. Whoa. Yeah. Holy moly. Wow. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> Let's cross the Atlantic. Yeah, I know, right? So for the first couple of weeks, I felt amazing. I had so much energy, I was working out and really just feeling so grateful that we're able to take this step together. To the point where I started getting a little cocky thinking like, wow, this is gonna be a breeze and I'm gonna nail this pregnancy thing. And then I hit week like four or five of being pregnant and my body has just been kind of slowly giving up on me and giving me a hard time with like very basic <laughs> procedures, like not being totally grossed out by cooking cooking things that I've cooked for years and years and years for Jordan. Do you want eggs? Yes. I do not. Because I love you. <laughs> oh. oh my god, that's so gross. This part. <laughs> it's just too much. I've also had a really hard time just having enough energy to try to continue to work out. So I've just been kind of a blob for the last couple of weeks. So I've been taking a lot of random naps and laying around the boat while Jordan's like outside working his little butt off. But he's been so sweet and supportive and he's been doing such a good job of researching how to make me feel better. How are you feeling, buddy? It's like the simplest thing. I'm just like click or read. I just get all like sweaty and I'm like, I can't concentrate. And I'm just so like nauseous. I just wanna lay down. Want some crackers? <sighs> and put something in your stomach, buddy. I am so sick of crackers. There you go. Good buddy. My mouth is watering. You want me to get your bucket? Maybe. Some nuts or some mandarin. Uh, uh, some steak. That's the only thing that's like made me feel better. Steak. But I'm also getting sick of eating steak. <laughs> Can you bring me my fur, baby? Okay, come here. You got a job to do. Gotta make Desiree feel better. <laughs> I know. You can make me feel better. She just wants to eat my crumbs. <laughs> Gozo. You gotta go be a comfort animal. You're supposed to nuzzle me. Okay, now make me feel better. Here, you're my nuzzle prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going in for our first ultrasound. I am eight weeks and three days pregnant, so hopefully we'll be able to see this little baby for the first time, which is so exciting. At the same time, I am 36 years old, uh, which is a little bit older for a first time mother, so I'm a little bit nervous, but I've got my fingers crossed and we're just hoping for the best. Oh, no, I'm kidding. Heart beating right there. That's so cute. Oh, my God. Sorry. <laughs> 163. That's good. That's good. Nice. Good job, buddy. You're doing great. <laughs> I there's can't believe it. Like baby's head here is a little back curled around this way. Mm. Little butt right there. There's that little heart beating. So do you have a feeling one way or the other what you think it might be? I want it to be a girl. What about you over there? With I, I, I have no preference. So I'm, <laughs> I'm on team and girl. She doesn't just really either, but <laughs> you might say that, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she... <laughs> have you ever been around any teenagers? 
teenage girls, right? <laughs> so the big question now that we know I'm pregnant is where the heck are we going to have this baby? And although it is slightly tempting to kind of hunker down in the United States and have the baby here, Jordan and I are just so excited about crossing the Atlantic and we've worked so hard for it for so long that we're going to do it no matter what. So we need to find a country on that side of the pond to deliver this baby. And that becomes a little bit complicated in the med for sailors because of tourist visas. So basically a lot of the first world countries in the Mediterranean that you can access by sailboat are part of a region called the Schengen region. So when you enter the Schengen region, you're issued a 90 day visa where you're able to go to any country in the Schengen region. However, after 90 days, you actually have to leave the Schengen region completely to a non-Schengen country for at least 90 days. Only then can you return to the Schengen region. So a lot of times sailors kind of bounce back and forth between Italy and then Croatia, for example, which isn't a part of the Schengen region. And after doing a lot of research and talking to our doctor, he highly suggested that we be in the location that we're going to deliver our baby by the time I'm seven months pregnant, which in my case would be around September. And so I really need to find a place where we can hunker down for more than three months at a time so that we've got the hospital that we want to deliver the baby in and so that we're not constantly moving around and dealing with the stress of passages and visa shuffling. So that means our options are either to hunker down in a country that is not part of the Schengen region and have the baby there or to try to find an extended visa so that we can stay in a Schengen country for longer than three months at a time. So most of the countries in the med that are not a part of the Schengen area are developing countries and we spent a lot of time in developing countries in the past and I think you can definitely find high quality healthcare there. In my experience dealing with healthcare and all the stress that goes along with it, I've always told myself that when it comes to having a baby, I'd really like to be in a first world country. So for the last couple of days, I've been diving into a wormhole of research, trying to figure out if there's a way to get an extended visa for a country that is part of the Schengen region. And in doing my research, I reached out to Dan and Kika over at Sailing Uma and they told us about this magical thing called the digital nomad visa and these are visas or permits that certain countries issue to allow you to work remotely in a foreign country. So at that point, I made a list of all the countries in the Mediterranean that offer a digital nomad visa and started cross-referencing those countries with my international health insurance plan and seeing which hospitals and doctors I like the best. And one of the countries on that list was Malta, which honestly, I didn't even know where Malta was located until I heard about the digital nomad visa. And I was pleasantly surprised to find out how beautiful and conveniently located Malta is and English is one of the national languages there so I'd be able to speak English with my doctor which would be so amazing and then diving deeper into the hospital that I'd be having the baby in Malta it looks really awesome and so basically we've decided to have our baby in Malta and then once we have the baby we'll want to get cruising again but we won't want to be doing like extended long sails so what's really great about Malta is there's a ton of really great cruising grounds really close by so that is our plan we're gonna have our baby in Malta. <laughs> right now I'm just getting all of our paperwork ready so that we can apply for our digital nomad visa in Malta. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to be a smooth process and hopefully they'll let us in and we'll have a little Maltese baby. Wish us luck. We'll keep you guys updated with any updates to our plan. So what do you think, little baby? You excited to have another baby? You're not gonna have so much attention anymore, are you? <laughs> no, he's not. So, I mean, obviously, like, we're both excited about potentially having a, a baby. I'm particularly terrified of it. <laughs> You're not as, like, afraid, are you? I know it's gonna be way more challenging to have a baby on a boat that's moving from country to country. But I also know we've done some pretty difficult things in the past and I think we've learned a lot from really high stress environments. Sometimes I get worried that a kid's gonna be a weirdo. Yeah, it's like a very imbalanced lifestyle for a kid, you know? There's some things that are super amazing. Like I would have loved growing up on a boat as a kid. At the same time, I really liked having a core group of friends that I was 
with the whole time. I mean, I guess I'm thinking about this too far in the future, you know what I mean? Like, we're Step talking- one, push the baby out. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I feel like we've started to dial in our lives. Like, we've been working for years to, like, figure out how to balance sailing, boat work, making videos. We're gonna have this whole new responsibility that just seems so intimidating and I don't know how to do it. The way I see it is like we've built our lives this far. We've become like somewhat capable adults. I think for the purpose of becoming good parents. And it makes me think of little dude, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like life is kind of harder with him, but I don't even think about that now. If someone were to try to take this little dude away from me, I would cut them. Yeah, right? Would you yeah. 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 So you feel like we can do it? I think we could do it. I think we can try. Well, as long as you think we can do it. Yeah. Think about it this way, buddy. You've got to push a baby out of your body, mm -hmm. but I have to watch you push a baby out of your body. That seems really hard. That's gonna be gross. <laughs> so in a way, you're the lucky one. Yeah.